I'm John Kovach. I've been a newsman, a sports announcer, and a football coach, but the one constant since I was old enough to stand next to a stream with my dad has been fishing. I've waded rapids, stood on slick rocks, hacked through ice, and been tossed about the deck of a boat. And I want you to love fishing as much as I do and join me on this journey. Welcome to Yankee Fisherman, presented by The Dock Shop. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to Yankee Fisherman, presented by The Dock Shop. Thursday, January 12th. Really excited to be bringing you today's show. A few days ago, we had a chance to talk to Jamie Howard of Howard Films. They recently completed Running the Coast. It is an opus. It is an homage. It is an experience following the 1,000-mile migration of striped bass along the eastern seaboard and chronicling the lives of those who catch them. Greg Meyerson, who we've had on the show from uh, World Record Striper Company, his quote on the Howard Films website, howardfilms.com, thank God for this movie. This, the images in this movie are striking. The story that it tells is going to really grab you if you're an angler, if you're a conservationist. It's a beautiful work. Let's go to that interview with Jamie Howard of Howard Films about running the coast. Welcome to Yankee Fisherman, presented by the Dock Shop. A privilege to be joined by Jamie Howard of Howard Films. If you are a surfcaster, if you are in the coastal area like we are here in southwestern Connecticut, you've been eagerly awaiting running the coast. You've seen what's out there. Following the striped bass migration over 1,000 miles, fishing, it, it just some of the images that Jamie Howard and Howard Films caught just blow me away. Jamie, welcome to Yankee Fisherman. What a, I don't like to throw the word epic around, but what an epic uh, chronicle of the striped bass migration. Had to be incredibly difficult to do. It was, and I actually, to be honest with you, I, if I had known, uh, the movie probably would not have got, been made. I was naive enough to, you know, to get in my car with a plan uh, about five years ago and thought I could knock it out in a season, maybe two. And then when I realized how many miles we had to cover and how many times we had to time it right, I um, realized we'd be back the next year. And then as we realized that we wanted this to be sort of the magnum opus of the sport, Every time we'd run into someone, they'd say, well, are you doing this? Are you doing that? And I would sort of look at my partners and go, oh, well, no. And so then we would realize that we were coming back the year after that, the year after that. So it's been a little bit of a wild ride, but um, we had to do it right. So we kept, we kept at it. Did you find that that wild ride that you ended up on is what attracts a lot of the hardcore striped bass fishermen to the sport? I think that everyone has a fish that they imprint on. And it could be something that happens from late life or they have, happens to them in childhood. But I think that with the striped bass fishermen, they got, they got pulled into a fish that just comes to them and from no, nowhere that they particularly know. They just know they need to be there. And I think it's that idea of, it's sort of like the siren song. All these people are trying to guess when the fish are coming, and I think it's, you know, it's sleeplessness. It's, as we say, it's sleeplessness and delirium, and I think it, there's a bond there that absolutely uh, joins all those guys. They, they don't want to be, you know, on a quiet pond on a summer afternoon. They, they really like being, I think, beat up because there's a, once you get that fish, you know, you're really working hard for it, you know. And um, it's, there's just something special about it. When that line goes tight, those guys kind of give each other a look like, hey, <laughs> we're here. And they look around to see whether anybody else is. Yeah, I think it's Pretty kind cool. of a, yeah, it really is. I think it's kind of a type double A fisherman because you're really putting, you're, you're I don't want to say suffering, but you're suffering to really be yeah. a hardcore, dedicated, striped bass fisherman. And I think you really capture it in that trailer. Did you know you were going to be getting up at 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning? No, actually, it's funny. I, I knew that I was going to have some tough days, but I thought, you know, when, when Bill Wetzel up in Montauk said to me, uh, meet me in the parking lot at 3, I kind of, and I, I just arrived, and it was 11. 
and I was setting up my gear. I looked and I looked around. And I said, "Oh my God!" And so, I, I, but we actually didn't get to sleep the first day. Um, by the time we were setting up our gear, we time to meet him. And then the walking down the the rocks, and you know, and we just literally. I was actually went under a wave the first day. I was out in the surf trying to fish and I was on a boulder and he just went out to his favorite boulder and I had to find a boulder and then I got hit by a wave and I literally held my camera up above my head while I was underwater to keep filming. <laughs> so it's, uh, yeah. I mean, you know, there, there's a fly, fly fishing in this as well and that is slightly more controlled in the sense that you're fishing on flats. You're not, you're not out in the ocean as much except when you're chasing the blitz in Montauk. But the fly guys, they get beat up mentally because they're trying to get a fish that's so skittish because it's in shallow water and, and you know, white sand that it's, you know, striped bass like, you know, more, they like to be in rocks and darker light. And so they're, you, they're, those guys are losing their minds because they're trying to outwit a fish that's pretty much like on the run, like, a, like it's just robbed the bank, you know, and you're trying to slow it down to eat something. How much different was the environment in which you filmed running the coast to that where you filmed Chasing Silver? Well, there were times when it was very similar. Um, you know, because we, this really is an opus, because we were on flats in Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard and, and, uh, and Maine and the Hamptons, there were times it was very similar. But, um, it was kind of funny at times because we were, um, you know, sometimes it was so cold and we're getting hit with, you know, <laughs> ice water and sort of laughing going, this is so, this is so far from where we started. Um, and these fish have taken us here. You know, they started, we followed them from Chesapeake and we had to keep going, you know, and I think um, it was sort of funny how, how different it was. Um, at times, you know, from from what people knew us as, it's sort of turquoise waters all the time to a fish like in, you know, cold waters um, off of rocks and uh, boulders and, you know, northeasters were preferred over, um, you know, idyllic situations. That's very unusual from where I've been, you know, people wanting um, that to, to happen to bring in the bait was, you know, you can't do that with tarpon fishing because the fish will leave immediately. They have no interest in that kind of nonsense. It, it's a different breed that chases, that chases the striper. Now, how long did you have this idea before you set out to follow the migration? Well, I have been talking about it for years with some of the guys I produced with at the networks. I said, you know, I want to do one last film you know that i think is the sort of encompasses everything i think that's the migration so it probably you know it probably was in the works five years before that it took five years to make so you could say it took 10 years wow. to get this um up and up on the screen probably what came first for you are you an angler i am yeah yeah what came first the fishing or the filmmaking oh for sure the fishing um you know, I worked in advertising in New York, making commercials, and I sort of at some point realized that no matter how much money they threw at a commercial or whatever sort of glamorous thing we were running around thought we were doing, it was really empty compared to being able to do long form and really show what the magic of fishing is what we wanted. And that was what, you know, was missing for me a little bit when I would tune in on the weekends. I couldn't find that. There would be sort of you know, series that had to be formulaic, and I don't blame them for their own survival, but I wanted fishing to have its own glory, just like, you know, skiing did and surfing did and all these other things. So that, I realized that um, after 9-11, I was going to make a big change, and that's when I decided to uh, take the, the film work that I learned in New York and take a big risk. So that sort of led me out from there. But yeah, I've been fishing pretty much my whole life, um, you know, learning how to get from whether it was a you know shallow water with a fly rod to deep stuff with stripers with my father off of Montauk later in you know high school and college is there a favorite uh, favorite species for you to go after huh you know it always seems to be the one I'm working on because <laughs> um, I get so obsessed with it and so I kind of become 
the angler that, that, that I'm surrounded by. So I would say at the moment, striped bass is very much in the lead, although I have to say that uh, a brown trout um, out in the, in the Rockies, Montana, Wyoming, Idaho, is, um, occupies a lot of my mind throughout the year as well. You a fly guy or a conventional tackle guy? Um, I fish fly in the summer for for um, for trout, and then um, when you know, I would say there are times like largemouth. I'll fish conventional light tackle um, stripers. I'll I'll do light tackle um, with conventional as well. It really depends on the moment, you know. It really, I think you should really master both disciplines and then use the one that's going to be the best and the most exciting in the moment. There are times when the conventional is just a really cool thing to do, and um, the fly rod just is not the right weapon of choice. And then there are times when to be able to pull out a fly rod in shallow water and sight fish for something, you just want to grab it. And so I think it's you know it's a good thing to kind of put your put your time into sort of get as good as you can. I And I don't even pretend to be as good as the guys that we were following around in this movie. I mean, those guys have put their hours in. They know they know things that I, I just do not, and so that's why it's better for me to be pointing at them with the camera than the other way around. Yeah, I, and I couldn't agree more with, with knowing as many different styles of angling as you could. I'm one of those that I'll be out with a surf rod, I'll be out with a light tackle, I'll be out with any any weight fly rod whatever i can get out there with i'm going to get out there what did you learn about angling while running the coast you know it's interesting i mean it one it one was a philosophical lesson which is that you really have to love it to do it um because there are days where you're just literally going to get nothing and I think that's, you know, that's a lesson of a, of a fisherman is you really have, it, it's, it's a passion that has to, to transcend just the catching. Um, the other thing I learned is that, um, not, again, not a tactical thing, more of a philosophy thing, which is that the preservation and the conservation angles cannot be overlooked within the passion of the sport. And no matter how much we love the fish, we can't love them to death. It's just too important. And you realize after doing as many films as I have and has gone as many miles as every fishery that I've gone to is in decline. Every single one has is not as good as when I originally fished it. And I think that's just a universal issue that has to be accepted, which is, you know, we love it, but we can't love it to death. And so, you know, it's kind of like putting on your big boy pants and realizing, you know, some there's going to be some sacrifice. And I think, you know, this movie was an attempt to sort of, that was my attempt to try to make my sacrifice which is i'm not going to fish i really didn't fish during this whole thing i just filmed and um you know and and ta- the third thing tactically what i learned i think what i would say is that you have really got to know your tides and you've really got to know um the nuances of the sport in terms of temperature wind depth um and you will catch more fish uh, just showing up at a rock um, during the quote time to catch the time of the season, you are not going to do as well um, as the guys who've really learned um, the difference between catching and and uh, just chucking. Where can someone who's interested in seeing running the coast get the uh, video? Well, uh, the movie is, is out now on DVD, and it's also streaming in HD. And I think what I've found is people, um, there's a certain preference, but both have seemed to work. And so I would go to uh, just to howardfilms.com. It's probably the simplest way to do it. There's a, and then you'll find the Running the Coast page. So if you just go to, you know, Howard Films, that's films plural, um, one word, um, it's, it's all there, and it's, you can watch it any way you want. Television, iPad, streaming, DVD, in the woods, um, treehouse, <laughs> whatever you want. But I'm, it's really awesome that it's finally all in one place. It's spring, summer, and fall are now all on the miniseries all in one spot, which is pretty, pretty nice, finally. And it's, and it's gorgeous. Glad to talk to guys like you about it. It is absolutely glorious if you love the outdoors, if you love striped bass, if you love angling, 
you've got to see this because it just it's visually arresting it captures one of the more dramatic styles of fishing in certain segments and it really just it just left me wow and i think it'll do the same for you what's next for jamie howard well, listen, I listen, and thank you for saying that, too, because then it should be fun. The movie is supposed to be fun as well. I think we wanted to keep that. The reason we go fishing is it's fun, so a lot of crazy stuff happens. But what's next for me probably is, A, making sure people get find this film and just get to enjoy it. And then probably I'll probably do working on some smaller projects that may still be related to, uh, to the striped bass before we wind up another thing of this size. <laughs> Um, yeah, we'll probably work on some small projects right now that, um, maybe for some commercial clients, we'll see. But, um, right now I'm just making sure this gets done and then we'll probably work on some other saltwater projects in 2017. Stay in touch. Keep us posted. We'd love to have you back on again. Really enjoyed talking fishing. Really enjoyed talking stripers. Jamie Howard, Howard Films, running the coast. You'll follow a thousand miles of a striped bass migration and it's awesome we'll be back with more yankee fishermen presented by the dock shop right after this well there's still a bite out on the water most anglers have decided to stow the gear for the winter just because mother nature isn't cooperating doesn't mean you can't see the latest models of all your favorite gear with two convenient locations it couldn't be easier to get your fix of summer boater, beach bum, fisherman, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The Dock Shop, 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, or on the web, dockshop.com. Are you ready for winter? Ski and Sport has everything you need to be fully outfitted for the season. A family-owned and operated business with over 40 years of experience, Ski and Sport's three convenient locations in Fairfield County offer top quality, high fashion ski and winter wear. In addition to clothing for men, women, and children, we also offer seasonal rentals for the entire family. Stop by our stores on 1 Ethan Allen Highway in Richfield, 877 Post Road East in Westport, and at 110 Main Street in New Canaan, or visit us at skiandsport.net. Have a sports injury or slip and fall that needs immediate care? Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist fast, without an appointment. Basketball, hockey, skiing, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care, open Monday through Saturday, now in two locations. The iPark Building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk and 36 Old Kings Highway South in Darien. Or go to CoastalOrthoExpress.com, like them on Facebook. HAN Network is available for 200,000 Connecticut cable customers on the Frontier Network. And we've also reached 1.7 million viewers on our free live streaming sports, news, and entertainment broadcasts. To reach our rapidly growing audience, contact Advertising Director Jessica Murren at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. Welcome back to Yankee Fisherman, presented by the Dock Shop this Thursday, January 12th. 2017. Thanks again to Jamie Howard of Howard Films for spending a, a considerable amount of time discussing running the coast with us. Really enjoyed that discussion with him and really enjoyed seeing what he captured in that journey that he took to create running the coast. Howardfilms.com for more information or if you want to get a copy of the DVD. Uh, DEEP in Connecticut uh, sent out an interesting kind of a caution thing the other day on his Facebook page. It's January, so we're all renewing our various licenses, and there are certain websites out there. They go by a generic fishing license dot or hunting license dot, and they 
claim they can simplify the purchase according to DEEP. If they charge you fees, those fees don't go toward your license. That is the warning from the Connecticut Department of Energy and Environmental Protection. And these sites are not affiliated. You can go directly to any of your state fish and wildlife, environmental protection, fish and game, whatever uh, websites and get that. These third parties are... Anytime somebody tries to insert themselves in a process, you have to kind of question it. And uh, to quote the Connecticut DEEP, the consumer on these sites should understand that they are only getting assistance for their money and not actual fishing and hunting licenses. Additionally, the money being charged by these websites is not a credit toward the purchase of any Connecticut fishing or hunting website. So just know, should you choose to go to a third party site, which you really don't have to, they've done a wonderful job of making it easy to renew and get your licenses online. So exciting time. We just spent some time talking with uh, Jamie Howard. There's a lot of surf casting that we talked about in there and we're coming up on the sixth annual Connecticut Surf Casters Association Demo Day. Now, that is at Clinton Town Hall. That is coming up on Saturday, the 28th. Um, it's an all morning thing. And they have a number of things. You can do a lot at the demo day. They have, they drew a huge crowd last year, which we were there to capture. Um, but they, there's a lot of lure vendors there. There are people there with some vintage tackle that will look at what you have. There's a lot of vintage stuff to pick up should you want to use the older stuff. Uh, you can talk to the lore makers, etc., who are in Clinton Town Hall. Uh, they will be doing a lot of demos throughout the day, hence they call it Demo Day, uh, rigging eels. Uh, restoring old lures. Matt Lejeune, who uh, did our Surf Casting 101, uh, Matt will be there. He's organizing this and did a great job with it last year. Uh, Dick Fincher, who's going to speak to Nutmeg TU, he's going to be there on the 28th about his wooden plugs. You'll learn how to modify uh, your lures like we, we're seeing here. We're adding some weight to these, to these lures to give them a little bit more oomph in the cast. Just a lot going on there. Connecticut Surf Casters Association Demo Day on the 28th. They're updating their website constantly uh, on, and their Facebook page even more so. Go to their Facebook page, Connecticut Surf Casters Association, for up-to-date information. They're profiling a vendor a day. It's really worth the trip. We're going to step out for a minute. When we come back, some more upcoming events on Yankee Fisherman, presented by the Dock Shop. Well, there's still a bite out on the water. Most anglers have decided to stow the gear for the winter. Just because Mother Nature isn't cooperating doesn't mean you can't see the latest models of all your favorite gear. With two convenient locations, it couldn't be easier to get your fix of summer. Boater, beach bum, fisherman, or simply love the New England coast, this is a unique place to shop. The Dock Shop. 51 Tokenique Road, Darien, 609 Riverside Avenue, Westport, or on the web, DocShop.com. Are you ready for winter? Ski and Sport has everything you need to be fully outfitted for the season. A family-owned and operated business with over 40 years of experience, Ski and Sport's three convenient locations in Fairfield County offer top-quality, high-fashion ski and winter wear. In addition to clothing for men, women, and children, we also offer seasonal rentals for the entire family. Stop by our stores on 1 Ethan Allen Highway in Richfield, 877 Post Road East in Westport, and at 110 Main Street in New Canaan, or visit us at skiandsport.net. Have a sports injury or slip and fall that needs immediate care? Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care gives you direct access to an orthopedic specialist fast, without an appointment. 
basketball, hockey, skiing, whatever the sports injury is, sprain or fracture, Coastal Ortho Express can help. Coastal Ortho Express Urgent Care open Monday through Saturday, now in two locations. The I Park Building at 761 Main Avenue in Norwalk and 36 Old Kings Highway South in Darien. Or go to CoastalOrthoExpress.com, like them on Facebook. Broadcast, you're not alone. The HAN network is available for 200,000 Connecticut cable customers on the Frontier Network. And we've also reached 1.7 million viewers on our free live streaming sports, news, and entertainment broadcasts. To reach our rapidly growing audience, contact Advertising Director Jessica Murren at 203-273-7312 or email jessica at han.network. Welcome back to Yankee Fisherman presented by the Doc Shop. So it's January, time to get the Christmas tree out if you haven't done so already. And if you're still getting it out, there is still time to donate it to Mianus Trout Unlimited. They're going to be at Merwin Meadows again this Saturday. That's a shot from last Saturday. They, they were out in the snow collecting. They'll be collecting trees again from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Merwin Meadows in Wilton. Real Christmas trees that you're done with. Take all the ornaments, tinsel, everything off of it. It has to be stripped bare. Got to be a real tree. But what they will do is they put them into the river, the Norwalk River in this case for the most part, and it helps create habitat and it helps alter the stream and restore the stream to its original flow. The structure of the trees catches sediment. It, it, it's a great way for your tree to be used in conservation, get back to nature, rather than see it in a landfill or see it turned into smoke uh, being burned someplace. Uh, other TU news, Dick Fincher of Phase 2 Lures, and he'll be at Demo Day, as we said. He's going to discuss those handmade wooden plugs with Nutmeg Trout Unlimited on Tuesday, January 17th at 7 o'clock. That's at Port 5, 69 Brewster Street in the Black Rock section of Bridgeport. Dick's a friend of the show. He's been on the show. Uh, I actually encountered him through Mike Lascala at the dock shop and really looking forward to seeing more people learn about Phase 2 lures. Very cool stuff. Uh, the DEEP, and this was all done before it started to push 60 degrees today, uh, announced that there are going to be free family ice fishing classes this week in Glastonbury, New Haven, Killingworth, and Litchfield. Certified instructor from the Connecticut Aquatic War uh, Resources Education Program will teach ice fishing. You can find info at ct.gov slash deep slash care. That's for the free ice fishing lessons scheduled for this week. They are reporting good pike fishing on Bantam Lake, um, but they're warning everybody, given the temperatures, to be careful about this ice melting. I think we started to get it. I'm really fearing that we are going to uh, be losing it very quickly. Next Thursday, we're going to be talking about the Connecticut Fly Fishermen's Association, and they're going to have their expo on Saturday, February 4th at Manili's in South Windsor. We're going to preview that and look back at 50 years of the Connecticut Fly Fishermen's Association on next Thursday's Yankee Fisherman. A uh, reminder, the fly fishing show is in Marlboro, January 20th through 22nd. Uh, it's in Somerset the next weekend. That is going to be the 27th, 28th, and 29th. The Fly Fishing Film Tour and Jamie Howard's film has been added to the Fly Fishing Film Tour. I don't know that it's going to be on the stop coming up in Trumbull. And that is a fundraiser for local Trout Unlimited chapters, Mianus, Candlewood Valley, and Nutmeg. That is going to be at Bowtie Marquee 16 in Trumbull, Friday, February 24th. We are going to have more on that 
on a coming show. A lot more on that. I'm very excited about that interview. And that's going to do it for this week's Yankee Fisherman. Tune in next Thursday. Till then, tight lines.